Now what is this? These guys suck. And he's wearing a scarf. Who wears a scarf in space, honestly? Hello, and welcome back to Movies and Coffee with me, Tom. How you doing? Good. Um, I'm a movie nut. I'm guessing that's why you're here too. This channel is really an excuse for me to um, catch up on some classic movies or not so classic movies that have just fallen through the cracks. I just haven't got to for whatever reason, but obviously any suggestions are welcome. One of my previous videos, actually the world's fastest Indian that came about because basically recommendations, not really on my channel, but just in general on reactors pages, there are a lot of comments like, oh, you should watch this film. So I kind of took heed of that. So go check out that video if you haven't seen it already. So today we are watching Silent Running, uh, which is a sci-fi from 1972, I believe. I've kind of always been aware of it, and I know people who talk about it always say, oh, you know, that's like their favourite film and stuff. I think the only reason I haven't watched it so far is because, probably because when I was a kid, it was like, oh, what's it about? It's about, uh, you know, an astronaut in space and he does a bit of gardening with a couple of robots. I think that was like the synopsis I got from it. <laughs> So I was like, huh. But you know, as a kid, you were like all about the explosions and the beautiful women and the guns and stuff. And you think a, a sci-fi film about gardening doesn't really float my boat. Um, but you know, you get a bit older and you, you get a bit more philo philosophical. And I think it'll, I'll definitely enjoy it more, having waited, actually. I know Bruce Dern's in it. Um, I know Bruce Dern from... <laughs> very embarrassing. From The Haunting, the... Uh, Jan de Bont um, Debacle, which is kind of a guilty pleasure of mine, to be fair. Also known from The Driver, which is a brilliant 1970s kind of getaway car film. There's a whole ton of them in the 70s and 80s. So he's in it, and I know there are like two little robots that like help him out. Beyond that, don't really... Oh, I think it, it's directed by Douglas Trumbull, who I believe did the special effects for 2001 Space Odyssey and... Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So if nothing else, the effects in this, I'm sure will be... Yeah, not much else to say really. So um, before we dive in, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Uh, you can sign up for alerts for the next uh, film, see what's coming up next. Um, also have a Patreon. So yeah, let's dive in and watch Silent Running. Uh, the old Universal logo. Always makes me think of uh, Back to the Future. Bruce Dern. And a snail, for some reason. Ron Rifkin. He, he was in um, Alias, wasn't he? Definitely very gentle vibes so far, which is kind of what you expect. It's almost like hippie-esque. But I'm digging it. Bunnies. I bet you'd like something to eat, wouldn't you? Hmm? That's basically me, me with my cat every day. <laughs> it's almost like a monk. It's like a monk-like existence. Whoa! I was going to say, is he the only guy on the ship? But apparently not. Hey, get out of the way! Yahoo! What the? What a bunch of pricks! They're on the same ship. They work on the same. Ugh. Does look quite fun, to be honest. Did you see the way that Lowell from that rake at me? Now, why don't you guys lay off Lowell for a while? Why don't we just have a little fun? Now, what is this? These guys suck. Let's set this thing up the way it was before, huh? And he's wearing a scarf. Who wears a scarf in space, honestly? Ah, oh, missed it. Damn. <laughs> do you guys have jobs to do? We're just going to mess around all day. Hey, Lowell. How about a little of the old poker? Yeah, later. He's like, no, don't want to hang out with you. I'd rather weigh my turnips. Thank you very much. We humbly beg forgiveness. May God bless these gods. So, as usual, man has destroyed the planet and sent out the last remaining vestiges of humanity to try again. Is that little robot like um, like E.T., is it a, a, a guy with no um, like legs? That's a lot of gardening. 
Okay, he does have a uniform. <laughs> 50. 50. And 100. It's weird seeing Bruce Dern as like the, the quiet one, the calm one. Usually the stuff I watch him in, he's like the angry old man. <laughs> Oh shit, is that, is that Ron Rifkin on the left there? Jesus, didn't even recognise him. They're about to re-establish the parks and forest system. With you no doubt as director, you can think of anybody better? Really, it's more likely that they're going to announce cutbacks. What's going to happen if these forests and all this incredible beauty is lost for all time? It's kind of sad. This was 1972. We're now 2023. We're still destroying rainforests and burning oil and stuff. We never learn. This is Calm Central. We have just received orders to abandon and nuclear destruct all the forests and return our ships to commercial service. What? This is it! We're going home! You're gonna blow up the last rainforest to save money. Right. Makes sense, you know? It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> ah, capitalism. <laughs> Imagine looking after basically an entire forest and someone tells you, yeah, we don't want to pay for this anymore. We're just going to blow it up. It'll be cheaper. I wonder if it's like the same actor who played E.T. actually. Because E.T. would have been like 10-ish years after this. So The same actor who plays the robot, I mean, not Bruce Dern. <laughs> he, Bruce Dern wasn't E.T. as far as I know. I want a front row seat when these babies go. Lord, you have to eat that stuff in there. It stinks. Oh, now you hurt his feelings. This happens to be nature's greatest gift. Hey, now, what's the big deal? I can't see the difference between that and this anyway. The difference is that I grew it. It calls back a time when there were flowers all over the earth, and there were plains of tall green grass that you could lie down in, blue skies, and there was fresh air. Wow, it's really sad, actually. So these three guys kind of represent, like, the fast food embracing of capitalism. Any difference they kind of like rebel against any original thought. There's no more poverty. Nobody's out of a job. Every time we have the argument, you say the same thing to me. You give me the same three answers all the time. But you know what else there is no more of, my friend? There is no more beauty and there's no more imagination. One reason why, and that is nobody cares. So they're just like apathetic, like what's happened's happened kind of thing. Please don't blow up the domes. Which one first? There's not any choice, though. They're not replaceable. Yeah, it's like, what good is jobs and money if there's no plant life? Like, the Earth's going to die, surely. Again, not dissimilar to what's happening in 2023. <laughs> what's that old saying? You can't eat money. Ow! Oh, my hand. Dumbass. Walk much? Will you help me? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Valley Forge safe distancing went over in five minutes. I'm gonna need your help for that, you know? Oh? They seem to rely on him an awful lot and yet they treat him like shit. It's like, your life's in his hands. Maybe be a bit nicer. Set gyro to dumb 406. Set for distancing. We're clear. Stand by for updates. So is this film like sponsored by American Airlines? American Airlines is a real like, airline, isn't it? Yeah. Anybody home? Hey! Think with fly. The bomb, please. Loaded and ready to go. <laughs> okay, looks real good. Imagine someone said, we're going to blow up a garden with all the like rabbits and like any of the wildlife and the birds. We're just going to blow it up. And these guys just like, are like, <laughs> Save the bunnies and the squirrels. But not these guys. It feels like a commentary on like, you know, industrial complex taking over the planet and destroying the wildlife, kind of like, kind of like watership down industry versus nature kind of thing. Listen, I'm on a tight schedule and I don't want to have to fight with you. You are not using those things in my forest. Listen, I ain't got time to argue. Now move! Oh shit, 
Did he actually kill him? So not an entirely peaceful monk then. I mean, fair enough, the guy was coming to like blow up an entire forest of living creatures and plants, so. I like how all the little debris floats away. That's a pretty cool effect. Wait, so did he just blow up those other two guys? Anybody home? Hey! Think the fly! Watch the Valley Forge. Come in, Valley Forge. Some very red blood. You still there, Neil? Yes, Parker. No, it's Lowell. He seemed to be experiencing some kind of problem with the main coupling. We'll be getting back to you just as soon as we can. Roger. Everything okay over there? Oh. Yeah, okay. A okay. Everything's okay. So yeah, everything's fine, we're fine. Uh, how are you? <laughs> drone one, drone two, drone three. Please report immediately to the main cargo area. Uh, there's three drones, I th thought there was just two. Direction to Valley Forge. Blow it any old way you can, Lowell. Big Billy wants to go. We're trying. Oh, uh, we got a hold on Valley Forge. So he's reset the course so he can like hide behind Saturn so they can't tell what he's doing basically, is that right? Valley Forge, what the hell's wrong? You're moving out, you're accelerating. So like bye. So it's a diversionary tactic. I've got a premature detonation on dome number two and I've got an explosion in the main cargo deck. He's like, excellent. My plan is working. Wouldn't it be simpler to just like turn off the radio? <laughs> they can't see what you're doing. Drone number one. I was gonna say, does drone number one have any medical capabilities? Just, just gonna poke him. So, you all right? <laughs> I need you guys to help me fix my leg. Drone number two, you'll perform the operation. And drone number three, you'll handle the oxygen anesthesia. Time for another poking. It's a weird series of cuts. I mean, film cuts. <laughs> Listen, Freeman, you've been with this project since the start. And you know the risks. I'm really sorry, Freeman. We'll never be able to stop you before you hit the rings. I see. God bless you, Freeman. Thank you, sir. So is he actually going to fall into Saturn, or is this just his like plan to like sneak away? Because <sighs> if you're going to fall into Saturn, why bother fixing your leg? Uh oh, that's not good. So, like, ah, fuck my leg. Just fixed it. <laughs> Drone number three, keep moving! Ah, so that's why there's two drones on the poster. It was very 2001 with all the different colours and stuff. Oh, he made it. Yay! So he gets to just live his best life now. Just chill out, do a bit of gardening, play with some squirrels. Pretty, pretty cool. Oh yeah, this guy. I guess he's going to be like natural fertiliser, isn't he? <laughs> really? Is he actually dead? Did we check? Wolf and Barker and Keenan, they weren't exactly my friends, but I did like them. But I had to do it. Well, you did what you had to do, didn't you? They had no respect for nature or life in general, so why should Lowe have respect for those guys? From now on, drone number two, you will answer to the name of Huey. And drone number one, you will answer to the name of Dewey. Huey and Dewey. I've uh, reprogrammed both of you. You'll also be spending much more time with me in the forest. The three of us together are going to find a tree. One, two... Huey and Dewey, weren't they like DuckTales characters or something? Was that a homage to this film? Now, Huey, you're going to plant a tree, and Dewey, you're going to dig the ditch. <laughs> the irony of having technology Look after nature. I like that. 
No. You had one job, literally. I think I've heard this film referred to as like a hippie in space. It feels kind of unique, like especially for the times, just how because you think sci-fi film, you think like you know aliens, explosions, and space battles. But really, he's just you know gardening. So what's his end game then? If he's not going back to Earth, he's just going to float indefinitely. Okay, boys. I'm about to take you two guys for every dime you got. I feel like you don't see this much in films anymore. Just like no, characters, just like hanging out, not really doing very much. What have you got? Bruce Dern's got kind of like a Jack Nicholson crazy grin about him, doesn't he? Let's go to the forest and get some real food. I don't know, all the plants are dying. Is it because Huey and Dewey weren't doing their job properly? Too busy playing card games with him. So the plants dying in the same way that the plants on Earth died, and he doesn't know why. Okay. Oh, no. We're coming to the dome. Wait right there, Huey. I was going to say, why don't you just go over, over there and have a look? Those go-karts are pretty cool. Oh shit. You did not just kill one of them. I like how he treats them as like living beings rather than just like just machines. I'm sorry, Huey. That's all I can do for him, Dewey. The forest is dying. Come in, Valley Ford. This is Brooks the Valley Ford. Do you read me? Oh, did they send out like a rescue ship after all? Because he assumed they would just like let him die because it'd be too expensive to come after him. We said we'd send out a search party. I guess I forgot. You'll have to find some way to jettison the dome. And it's awfully dark out here. Here we do it. Come on, we can still save the forest. So are the plants dying? Did he say because they're not getting enough sunlight? Like the ship is angled wrong or just needs more light in general light bulb there's a botanist do you think he kind of would have figured this out earlier <laughs> botanist biologist one of those you have to come with me because you're just not working well enough to help dewey berkshire to valley forge will be docking on your port side in two hours take good care of the forest dewey he can go with him because the the other ship will just continue looking for him. So he has to stay behind. You know, when I was a kid, I put a note into a bottle and then I threw the bottle into the ocean. Well, this took a dark turn. Uh, songs by Joan Baez. I wondered if, if if it was someone famous. Okay, so that was Silent Running. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I kind of liked how how kind of like unique it is. Like I said during the commentary, like it's very you don't see many films these days where it's just like someone hanging out. There's not a lot actually happening. Like films these days, you think of like. Marvel films where it's just like all like visual actions, quick cuts. It's almost like studios don't have the patience to just have the confidence to have characters to just talk and interact in the scene. They, they think like it's all about spectacle, but really some of the best films, it's really just like people talking. So what I'm saying is a film doesn't necessarily have to be like action, action, action. It was very much its own, it was unique, it had very a gentle kind of like I said hippie-esque vibe somewhere it's this you know it's about a guy who wants to look after nature but technology and you know rampant consumerism comes before um, the protection of nature that kind of thing yeah it was interesting to see Bruce Dern in kind of lighter role is the wrong word like a, a more gentle playing a more gentle character because I only know him as like the grumpy old guy in films or the like you know angry cop in um, The Driver so it's nice to see him in something different for me anyway. But he, he definitely has that kind of like Jack Nicholson like energy, that like crazy eye, like grin. You could almost picture him playing 
Jack Torrance in The Shining. I don't think I've ever thought that about any other actor. <laughs> if you had to replace Jack Nicholson, I think Bruce Dern would have been a pretty good choice. So yeah, I have to read up about, you know, the film and what the filmmaker's intentions were. But from what I took from it, and again, this is just my opinion from the first viewing, I'm sure I'll get a bunch of stuff wrong. I know you'll tell me if I do. <laughs> People love to tell me when I get things wrong. It felt like a, a commentary on, you know, you know, um, technology, the, the emptiness of technology and capitalism versus, you know, going back to what's natural and looking after nature and like the simple things in life. And it's not all about like the graft, it's about money and buying crap you don't need and stuff like that. And I felt like the, the other three guys, they were kind of like in sync with the, the system at large. They, they were like, they followed orders. They didn't really give a shit about nature. They kind of mocked Lowe for being compassionate basically for being an original thinker. And that's kind of, that's as true today as it was back then, I think, you know, people find security in playing the game, as it were. And any original thinker who comes along says, actually, this is a better way to think about things. This is a better way to live. Um, they just get shut down immediately and like mocked and like any change is bad because change is frightening, I guess, change is it makes you afraid and afraid people get angry and defensive, basically. So Bruce Dern as low, he had he definitely had noble intentions because he was trying to basically save the last little nugget of nature. And when the order came down from from above to just blow it up because, you know, oh, you know, it'd be cheaper to get rid of the gardens. You just like. So you can understand Bruce Dern's frustration and. Yeah, killing those three guys was not ideal but you know he didn't didn't really give them a choice or they didn't give him a choice sorry it's kind of a, a dark film it kind of ends on a dark note with him you know offing himself but also in a way kind of like a, a hopeful note as well like this last little nugget of nature has survived with this little robot it's going to take care of it for however long the robot's batteries last i guess i mean yeah, maybe maybe it's like a commentary on, on like you can't change the world, but as an individual, you can do your own little thing. Like Low couldn't save the planet, all the all the plants and the trees. He couldn't save that. But it could save his one little dome of you know nature. So yeah, it was an interesting film. It wasn't as um, special effect heavy as I kind of thought it might be. There weren't any like really, apart from when he goes through Saturn's rings, that then it kind of got very colourful and like almost 2001, like the gate thingy, bit like that. Um, but most of it was very simple, like model work. It wasn't very, it wasn't flashy. I don't know if that's down to the budget or simply because Douglas Trumbull just wanted to tell a really simple story and not have special effects like take over. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Definitely had a, a unique vibe with the Joan Baez songs and stuff. It's very, it felt very homey, if that's the word. It felt very um, domestic, which is strange considering it's a science fiction film set in space, but it felt very like homey. You constantly saw Bruce Dern like in his like dressing gown, just like making coffee or, you know, having breakfast. And it just felt very matter of fact, like he's just going about his day. He's a regular like blue collar worker almost. So yeah, good stuff. If you want to see the full reaction, you can check it out on Patreon. If there's any film you think I'd be interested in watching, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, so this is Tom, Last Survivor of the Valley Forge, signing off.